Mrs. Hammond, like Jane Austen before her, has a satirical take on the Gothic. My name is Mrs. Hammond. Welcome to my house of horrors. We are here to chill your blood, wobble your spine, and make you tremble. Today, everybody, I'd like to talk to you about an underrated neighbor of ours. It's bats. They are firmly mammals. You can tell they're mammals because they don't have beaks and they do have firm breasts as well. <laughs> right, I want everybody to watch bats for at least one and a half hours every night. That's <laughs> one and a half every hours. <laughs> I'm the Oracle of Kentrat. It's a very dull position. My friends get hearts and flowers. I get floppy hair because I sit in rain for hours. And then I, uh, uh, give me a prompt. Prompt me! <laughs> he's my nearest neighbour, and he's my best mate, and I'm a bloody great admirer of his big estate. <laughs> you may now kiss the bride. Miss <laughs> 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 Broad really likes me. I really like Miss Broad too. I am a northern shepherdess who gets so little sleep. Mine is not an ovine quest. I do not search for sheep. This woman is more powerful than, you know, it's kind of scary. There's kind of a return on him, aren't you? I have become demure and charming. The changing me is quite alarming. So here I am, a happy me. My thoughts are now of frippery. To read Lord Byron's wondrous sonnets, and to search for silk to trim my bonnets. Lisa's big moment has come. I've wept for years, these tears, these tears, will e'er I find a fellow who will buy for me lovely finery, a dress of golden yellow. Lisa's over 30. She would have been considered on the shelf by the time she was 27. Making a good impression in situations like these could mean the difference between having a life or being condemned to the misery of Regency spinsterhood. She's still hoping to win Mr. Everett with her voice. I'd give my beauty mellow, my bed and bowl and my heart and Lisa is longing to know if it was Everett who left the daisies on her pillow. Okay, what was the question? I've completely forgotten what it oh, was. Oh, come on, boring, ghosts, boring. I can't remember boring. what it was. It doesn't have to do with ghosts. I'm never going to talk remember. to you ever again unless you tell me the question. Ask me the question. <laughs> never again. I'm in a bit of trouble, really, because um, I fancy Miss Hopkins, because she's a, she's a very attractive girl, so Miss Braun a very attractive girl. But it just happens that in the first few days, me and Miss Hopkins sort of found a connection. And, uh, and it's really difficult talking to the guys because I probably shouldn't be saying this, but well, what the hell, I'm a bit pissed, but, you know, blatantly, me and Miss Hopkins have had a bit of a, a, bit of a snug <laughs> on a couple of occasions. Another love letter puts an end to all Lisa's hopes. I've just been given another note. Seems to be a bit of an exchange of notes between uh, Hopkins and Everett this evening. There's one from Hopkins just here, and it's uh, it's quite interesting. It says, um, it says, Mr. E, thank you for your note. I would like to say the feeling is mutual, and it's very hard that my loyalties are so divided. If I was allowed one wish in 2003, it would be that I would fall asleep with arms wrapped around me in the presence of someone who is as genuine as yourself. May you have sweet dreams, love, Miss V. 
The gentleman always has his lady on his right hand. So will you gather your ladies, please? <laughs> the men are taking lessons for the forthcoming Grand Summer Ball. Choose your partner. Why do I always get the ugly one? <laughs> <laughs> More than just a social occasion, the ball is a hunting ground for a wife, and the gentleman must perform. Come on, darling. <laughs> Three, two, three, four, two, three, five. Dance allows a rare opportunity to touch, even hold a woman. So balls were eagerly awaited by everyone. <laughs> Mr. Fox Smith, yeah, is, there, is there, is there, um, have you found something unusual? Yes. Yes, what is it? It's the whole experience, I'm afraid. <laughs> Are these the um, designs that we've been waiting for in the book? Yes, mm -hmm. Mum. Oh, well, lovely. While the gentlemen perfect their polonaise, designs for the latest ball gowns are delivered to Mrs Rogers, the hostess. I do like that, uh, that gesture though, of that lady. <laughs> <laughs> the lady here standing, very impaired. <laughs> do look. <laughs> for the chaperones, the ball is the opportunity to show off their young charges to the most eligible men. That kind of a headdress. Is that, that's what you want, or this one? Stunning. Do you think I should get my hair um? Because it's kind of curled, but it's curled yeah. all round there. Yeah, all round here is sort of curled. Mm. And then beautiful flowers on. The top. rich girls will have new gowns, but the lowest-ranking Miss Francesca will have to restyle an old dress. Yeah. Miss Francesca, <laughs> did you hear that? You could order trimmings <laughs> for your dresses, as long as it was within your means, because the invoice is being sent, but you would have to do the trimming yourself. Are we paying for right, trimmings? Right, OK. Yeah, I think the Countess and I are going to order new dresses. <laughs> as light as I am, this is quite hard work. <laughs> Living in this age of excess, our young bloods, like their Regency forebears, work hard to get in shape for the ball. Oh, God. <sighs> well, I think they're throwing sticks and, like, carrying sticks. In an image-conscious age, <laughs> their idols weren't footballers, but the taut, muscular bodies of classical statues. Oh, look, Mr. Mr. <laughs> He's gonna snap. This <gasps> madness. <laughs> While the gentlemen work up a sweat, the ladies have needlework. Supervised by the hostess, Mrs. Rogers, the young women must now spend four hours refining their feminine accomplishments. Do go first. Miss Braund is frustrated. The guys were outside and I really wanted to watch what they were up to. I just feel like we've been told to come and sew now and I find that quite difficult. It's the being told thing that I suddenly went, <laughs> okay, used to being told. <laughs> There's no question of joining the men. Until dinner, they are trapped in each other's company. I do find it quite difficult. I think it's just everyone getting used to the idea um, of getting used to other people. And maybe it was like that in a Regency house party, because you can't escape anyone. And that's the feeling you do get, is this closeted society. Mm -hmm. 